Hello and welcome. Now, most people at the age of 80 would be putting up their feet, slowing down, and enjoying the contentment of retirement, and who would blame them? But not my guest today. Instead of the easy life, he chose the perilous pastime of wing walking as a charity fundraiser following the death of his wife, Isabel. And now at the age of 95, Tom Lackey has flown into the history books and set an amazing 11 world records, and there are more pending. This daredevil, who is wheelchair bound, is lifted onto the top of the plane by a cherry picker and flies at 1500 feet, reaching speeds of up to 90 miles per hour. And he is set to take to the skies again soon, in fact, this September, uh, across the Channel Islands. So now, on Live Stories, we meet the fearless grandfather who has helped to raise over a million pounds in charity. A very warm welcome to Tom Lackey. Tom, now you didn't start this wing walking until you were 80. Uh -huh. but, uh, what keeps you going? What, what is it that you I mean? Do you have three, three bowls of cereal at breakfast time? Um, or what? No, no um, I suppose the answer is that would be um, a good red wine. <laughs> Not at breakfast, though. <laughs> so have you always been full of adventure and daredevil antics? Yes, I think I've always... Um, I, I like a challenge, and I hate the word you can't do this and you can't do that. Um, I've always been a bit of a rebel, I suppose. And uh, if they tell me it can't be done, uh, I think oh, I'm going to do it. Sometimes, sometimes I end up in trouble, but um, that's the way I've looked at it. I, I, I really like to take a channel, and if there's a bit of danger, I'll get a kick out of it. Well, as we were coming into the studio, you, you told me that you've been in trouble a few times in oh, your life. Oh, yes. So I'd like to hear a, a few things that you've been up to. Uh, Is your late wife, has your late wife been an inspiration to you for the charity fundraising and, and the wing walking? Uh, yes, although... Um, a queer funny thing is the reason I did it really, my wife was in her later years, um, she was 77 when she died, but she always said to, to me, Tom, uh, don't do the, you, you can't go flying anymore, you give up these silly things you want to do, because I was always still mad on flying or doing something daring. And uh, as I she said, you're not capable of doing it. And funny enough, when she died, I, it, it struck me so hard that I thought, well, I'm going to prove to her now that I can do it. So, and I was going to prove it to myself and also to her. You know, I could do it. And, and you that, always take a photograph of her, don't you? Oh, uh, yes. Um, I have a photograph of her and I've got it in my flying suit. And the, it goes up in the air every time I do it with walk. And the pilot, the, my pilot knows that very well as well. And it's always cl very close to me. So sometimes when I'm up in the air, and um, especially at a, been a few dozen moments, I think, well, she's up there with me. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> Let's turn the clock back, Tom, back to 1920. You were born in 1920 in Aston. Yeah. What was it like growing up in Birmingham in the 1920s? Well, uh, it was, um, I remember the back-to-back -back houses, and I can remember a lot of poverty people, yet it was a happy time somehow, and um, I... We had a very happy family. My father was a businessman, he was a builder, and uh, he was really, really happy actually. Good school, t a good time at school? School, yes. I uh, had to leave school uh, at the age of 14, uh, like most other people, and just get out to work, uh, which I did. And did you work for your father in the building business? I worked business? for my father. Uh, I, he used to employ all trades because um, he was a successful businessman. He built houses and uh, did quite a lot of building around Birmingham and all the area and houses in Sutton Coalfield. And uh, so um, I went in and he just said, what do you want to be? A uh, bricky, um, plumber or a painter or a carpenter? Or, or the little plumber. So I ended up as um, working for my father as a plumber. In all these years, you must have seen a lot of changes to Birmingham. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I remember the old bull ring 
uh, funny enough, um, I've got a picture of the old ballroom in the old market hall. And uh, I came home just for a few hours leave, and the coach pulled up, and my father and my girlfriend then, it was my early, early girlfriend, Dolly's White House, and she came with my father to see me back with the S. And as the coach turned into Corporation Street and went up to New Street, we heard this bum drop, which destroyed the market hall. And my, my father and my girlfriend was actually standing outside there, but they crossed over to get the tram back to Shirley. And I was going off Corporation Street, and the bus literally shot up in the air with the vibration of it. But I didn't know at that time. But that's, uh, that's happened. Gosh, yes, all the things that you've seen in your, in your mm -hmm. life. Yeah. But you were quite an adventurous young man. In fact, here's a picture of you um, when you were on holiday and uh, you were out there. I mean, you looked very muscular and oh, yes. uh, raring all, to go. Yes, well, I was always kept myself fit. I believe I kept myself fit. And a uh, bit of a show off, I suppose, really. <laughs> but um, I always wanted to keep myself fit. And uh, so this really helped me to do what I'm doing now, I suppose, really. So then the war clouds are gathering over Europe and you, you want to fly, but you end up in the, in the army. Yes, yes. It's complete. Um, the word I keep on, really, is call it frustration. Uh, I always wanted to fly, I always wanted to be a pilot. And um, in, in sh short, really, I was frustrated in, in doing that. But when my b brother got killed, and he just got the idea of getting into the Air Force. So your brother, I know, was killed during the Battle of Britain. Uh-huh, yeah. And this, I know, in a sense, stopped your flying career because an older brother yes. could have grandfathered you yeah. into the into yeah. the Air Force. But he then you could have claimed for me. And that it was actually going through the transfer until and Shatter knew he, he, he was killed. Yeah. So that put the blanket on it. So no Air Force for you? No, no flying for you no. until later on in your Not life? Not until but... I got out. Until yes. I started going flying again. So you ended up in the army and you were trained as a commando. That's right. And you went on raids or, and, yeah. and you went on a raid to Norway, didn't you? That's right, just on a simple raid. It was a propaganda raid, really. Um, and what they call a nuisance raid. So part of your, part of your story and hearing you talk um, earlier today, there is that um, rebel spirit in oh, you. Oh yes, definitely. I would definitely call myself a rebel because um, I don't know, it ties up really well with the thing that I'm doing today because, uh, I mean, I took up uh, flying again straight and level. I got fed up with that. And I decided then I wanted to do aerobatics, which is loop in the loop, battle rolls, stall turns, um, everything. And I've done every uh, stunt now that the CAA uh, say you must do to get this badge, which is the uh, extreme aeros. And I've um, done the, my son, who's a group captain in the RAF, he said, Dad, I've seen pilots pass out and black out and two plus, one plus, two plus G. Well, I've taken two plus, three plus, four plus, five plus G. And to be quite, quite honest, the email my own doctor said, I should be dead, because I have never, ever, ever passed out or been sick. And I'll loop, so, to loop the loop now a oh, uh, hundred times or more. A hundred times? Yeah, inside the aircraft and outside. And the aircraft. outside. It's unbelievable. I mean, Tom, here you are, well into your 90s, midway through your 90s. You're still doing it. We got up in your story to your, the war years and being a commando. Um, it's been an amazing life you've led. And I just want to quickly hear about the adventure. Adventure has always been your thing. But, Meeting your wife was an adventure. You, 
you, you saw a couple of ladies you quite liked, I understand. Yes, I, uh, happened you were... to be outside, and uh, I wasn't in, um, uh, in my union words. I was in hell with my father, as of then, I was in, well, he died. But I was in civilian clothes. I, was in, I couldn't look very attractive, I'm afraid. Here's but a I, picture of your wife in her. I saw the, um, these two waps walking down the road, and they both looked very nice, and I thought, oh, was, I was really rather cheeky. I just went out and I said, excuse me, girls. I said, but hi, Han. My pal can't come to the Hippodrome, and I've got two tickets for the Hippodrome on the Saturday night. Tell you what, hold it there with this story of love. We'll hear the full story in part two. Welcome back to Life Stories, where I'm talking to a remarkable daredevil, 95-year-old, who goes wing-walking. Tom Lackey has raised over a million pounds for different charities and has set an amazing 11 world records in the process. Well, Tom, just before the break, we were just starting your story about how you met Isabel, your future wife. So, you got two tickets uh -huh. for the... Hippodrome in uh -huh. Birmingham. You saw these two ladies or yeah. young women yeah. walking down the street. Yeah. Pick up the story there. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't really care who turned up because they were both attractive, although they were both Scots. And so I said, Look, you can't miss me. I said, but I'll be on the corner of Biddle's Lane and I'm still in the forces. And I also have a dress uniform, which was a bit showing off because during wartime uh, we weren't really allowed to wear our dress uniform. But I had one, and um, I should have been in the khaki. I said, I should be standing outside the church in Bill Lane. You can't miss me, you know, you couldn't miss me. And I'll be there waiting for you to get on the bus as we're going in the blackout, of course, to um, into Birmingham. And I stood there, anxiously waiting for one of them to turn up, and then suddenly a tap on my shoulder, and I looked up, and there was this huge waff. She was absolutely huge. She just looked, and she's a Yorkshire, Yorkshire. And she said, oh, you must be him. And I thought, I beg your pardon? She said, you must be him. I said, well, what do you mean? She said, Miss Grant said that you, you would take who was off this evening to the Hippodrome. Well, they like, they are on duty, and I'm off, so I'm, I'm coming. So, so did you take this lady to I the Hippodrome? What other toys as a gentleman could I do? I had to get on the bus and I took her to the, the Hippodrome where she downed two or three ton points of black and tan. And I was absolutely... Well, this, this yeah, young woman? Yes. Three points of black and yeah, tan? Yeah, because she said she was born in Burton on Trent. She was brought on and brought up on beer. And I, I, was, I was really furious because in those days you could only get more or less temporary beer or sherry. And she said that she wants a black and tan, which was a beer and a Guinness. And she had no bother about it. So anyhow, I dutifully took her back to Shirley and took her back to the billet. And I was so furious, I said, that right, the next day I went up to the billet and uh, I just happened to see Isabel, Isabel, my future wife, just put it out in the milk bottle. So I just caught it. I suppose that you thought that was very funny, didn't you? <laughs> and of course, she laughed her head off. She said, we thought you were very, very cheeky. We decided to teach you a lesson. I said, well, you certainly did. Anyhow, it took off from there. And now we've had a wonderful, wonderful life together. Well, that's a, that's a lov lovely story, a very yeah. romantic story, yeah. even though the other lady did... Uh, yeah. They'd take you for three black and tans. And they were serving that in the, yes, the bar at the Hippodrome yeah, in Birmingham yeah. in those days. Pulling the rafter, yeah. Yes, they're probably more wine and bottled beers yes, than nowadays. Right. Yeah. So that's fascinating. So um, you, you got married yeah. and you went up to Scotland to, to, to get married. The Isle of Skye, yes. And so then the war years go by. <clears throat> you come out of the army, I know, to, to go into your father's business. And you're working hard and building up building up that trade. And at some point, you wanted to go back to flying. That had always been your yes, dream. Yes, How did yes. you get into the flying? Yes, I remember going past um, with my daughter and uh, just uh, my wife, and I said, oh, I'm going in there, I want to go back to flying. She said, no, you can't, you know. And I've never been told, like, you can't do this. So, um, 
Bloody I went in there and I took up with a wonderful man called Rick Hines, the chief flying instructor at Wellsbourne. And he's absolutely a brilliant character. He was the first one to teach me to fly at all many years ago. But then, I, when my age, I was certainly wasn't going to go any, get anywhere as a commercial pilot. Uh, I couldn't afford the insurance or the fees. So he just said to me, well, Tom, you're a good, you're a good pilot. She said, you're a daredevil. He said, well, don't you take up aerobatics? And so I thought, well, that's different to flying straight and level. And I then started doing loop -de loops and stall turns and battle rolls, which are my favourite. So what age were you then? Oh, I was there uh, 20, golly, 23. Oh, right, OK. 23, 25, yes. Mm -hmm. And I was, yes. And um, I did quite a little bit of flying that my wife didn't know about. <laughs> offhand. I didn't even tell her. But anyhow, we... Um, so you continue to be cheeky with Isabel, yes? Yes, yes. The flying on the side. Yes. But she, um, she didn't really want me to stick my neck out. But um, I have done since. I think, you know, I think she would be quite shocked now, uh, quite pleased with what I'm doing. Because I'm sure she would. But had she known at the time what I was up to, she'd have killed me. <laughs> So practically 60 years later, after yeah. this, doing the aerobatics yeah. out of Wellsbourne yeah. Aerodrome, um, you said, right, I'm going to do it now. Did anyone try and stop you? Did members yeah. of your family, your, yeah. your daughter or your, yes. uh, your children try well, and stop you? Well, they've all tried to stop me, yeah. But you continued no, to be no, the rebel? No, but in fact, uh, Rick Irons, who said to me so a little while ago, he said, Tom, he said, I've been looking up at your pilot's book. He said, he said, you've got more hours flying upside down than you have straight and level. <laughs> so how do you do it? Just talk us through the process. I mean, or, or in fact, tell us about the very first time. Yeah. Were, you, were you scared getting onto the wing of an aeroplane? Uh, the, uh, the first time, yes. Uh, I was scared. It is, it, is, it is scary. It's still scary today, I think. But that's one of the main reasons I do it. But um, when I started wind walking, after a little while, I got fed up of doing ordinary wind walking. So one day I just turned around and I said, there, I said what do you want to do now? I said, well, I want to cross this channel. Because I was, you know, used to read about the, about the Britain boys and what they went through. And I thought it's going to be completely easy to me and nobody going to be shooting at me. I said, I went, oh, they said, you can't do that. And this is a rank and the experienced pilot is no, the CAA wouldn't allow you to do that. It's too dangerous, you know. I said, well, I want to do it. So anything said, well, we, we wouldn't, let, wouldn't take you off. But then I found a pilot named Mike Dentith, who's a brilliant, brilliant pilot. And he said, I'll take you. And I've been up and I said, so the first time I crossed the English Channel with him. And then um, the next year, I said, I want to do it. Um, I said, what do you want to do now? I said, well, I want to do it both ways, uh, from Dover to Calais and Calais back to Dover without getting off the aircraft at all. And I said, it's impossible. You can't do it. Another time telling me it's impossible. But uh, I did it. So you've done about 40 wing walks. Oh, yes. I've done about nearly 40 now. Yeah, over the years. You're in the... Guinness Book of Records, and I've got lots of certificates here. Yeah. I think I've got eight certificates yes, for various yes, yes. wing walks. You've, yeah. you've flown around Gibraltar. You met Miss Gibraltar. In fact, yeah. she was with you, yeah. wasn't she? Miss yes. Gibraltar. Yes, she was. Uh, she was very brave, really. Um, uh, she, she wanted to do it, and uh, she did it. And I, but I flew around the rock twice. And um, oh, I went a little bit away out of the... Um, Say to Gibraltar, myself. Uh, one of the things uh, Mike told me about when we crossed the English Channel, he said, "Now look, Tom, you know it's an in signal in your aircraft, which is what I fly at Wellsbourne and I do up there." He said, "Now this is um, a twin-engined um, Boeing Stearman, a, a, a single engine rather. If you hear that engine splutter, he said, Tom, you know, done well. We're going to come down." 
They want another to save us because we would never have time to recover, especially if we've gone over, over six miles over the channel. So he said, if that happens, he said, then you'll just have to throw your harness off, inflate your life jacket around Saver, and then when you're about 25 feet from the sea, he said, jump in. He said, and, uh, and I'll do the best, he said, and then the best thing we can do then is pray. <laughs> So I'm your, you're an incredible man, a real daredevil. I know you do this all for charity. You've raised yeah. over a million pounds yeah. for charity, for various charities yeah. um, over the last years with yeah. all your wing walks. Yeah. And yeah. I know that you'll be flying again in September. You'll be doing yeah. another wing walk. Yeah. And I dare say if people want to know more about you, they can find you on, on yeah. the internet. Tom Lackey, yeah. and you'll be... Uh, looking for more sponsorship and, uh, yes, and everything. Will, so, yeah, and you're doing a great job because it's people like you that keep that spirit of adventure and yeah. a little bit of rebellion as well. Oh, yes, quite a bit of that. <laughs> and uh, I think it's wonderful to meet someone from, uh, from Birmingham here who continues to, yeah. to fly the flag for the city. Yeah. And you've lived here all your life. And so I'd just like to say it's been an absolute pleasure talking to oh, you. Thank you. And uh, carry on the wing walking for yeah. as long as you possibly can. And Tom, it's been a pleasure hearing your life story. Thank you. You're a great man. Thank you. Thank you.